Biophilic design. Well, it sounds interesting. It sounds like it might even be nice, but what is it? Most of us spend about 90% of our time indoors and a lot of our living and working spaces are made of concrete and metal. But recent research seems to suggest that us human beings benefit from more natural environments. So today I wanted to find out more about that. Health Explorer Neil Fellows here, and if you want to get healthy and fit and stay healthy and fit and do it in a way that's natural and unique to you, please subscribe and hit the bell to get notified of all of our latest interviews and reviews. Joining me today to talk about biophilic design and the health benefits of it is Sharon Jackson from the European Sustainability Academy. So Sharon, um, we'd love you to tell me a little bit more about um, biophilic design and what the studies have shown is about biophilic design and its impact on, uh, on our health. Yes, of course. So biophilic design or biophilia is actually almost one of three concepts around the health and well-being um, attributes to us in, in the buildings that we work and live in effectively. So biophilia is a notion coined by biologist uh, E.O. Wilson in 1984 that humans have the innate need to be connected with nature. And when we're not connected with nature, we become very unwell. And there's a whole body of evidence that, that converges on that. Uh, it's very well understood now. And most people, I think, do understand that. There's also bioclimatic design, uh, which is about buildings being designed with, with the environment in terms of light, dark, sun, all those kind of things. So that's about building something so that it's naturally cooling or naturally warming in cold, colder weather. That's been around for a long time, actually, particularly in the extreme areas like the Scandinavian countries or the very hot countries. Then also more recently is the emergence of Shinrin Yoku. Now this is forest bathing. And this aligns very closely with biophilia because it's again about becoming healthy uh, and well through connection with nature. But that's actually connected with nature outside the buildings. So biophilia is about the buildings in connection with nature. Shimon Yoko is outside directly and bioclimatic is, is, is making the best of your building to be a healthy place. I don't know if that's helpful just as a yeah. starting point. Yeah. Um, and then I suppose I should say that where I'm sitting now is a biophilic, bioclimatic building. Um, and you see behind me, these beautiful uh, bricks behind me, uh, these are handmade from the earth outside in Crete, where I am now, where we, where we built this building in, in 2011. They're handmade of earth, they're, they're dried in the sunshine, so zero carbon, zero energy, and the whole building is made of earth, straw, wood and the stone that we literally dug out of the ground when, when, when we built the place. The roof has uh, green, green uh, roofs and that green, those green roofs were taken like turf from the footprint of the building and almost like rolled up and then put on, on the, 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 the roof above me here. About 20 centimeters of earth is, is above my head now. And uh, so we are really cozy and warm in the cold mountain Cretan winters. And I'm sitting here, it's about 30 degrees outside and it's really cool in here and there's no air con at all because it's bioclimatically and biophilically designed and it's a very healthy place to be it's a teaching academy we work really hard here but we really enjoy um, the health benefits and, and and learn more in fact so you asked about the studies so um well can i start by sort of suggesting what health is um, yeah. because it's quite difficult isn't it to really you know what is what does health mean what does health mean so i'm going to read the uh, the definition the official definition from the world health organization from 1948 would you believe so health is a state of complete physical mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity which yeah, pretty much says it all. So yeah. I told you I'm sitting in what you call a green building. So, um, but we are, cannot be called a green building because we're a prototype. There's no other precedent to measure this building against in terms of its healthiness. Mm. So we can't be called a green building. But when people come here, the hundreds and hundreds of people who come here to learn about sustainability, when they write in this lovely visitor's book of ours, for what type of experience they have, they don't talk about the teaching. They hardly talk about what they've learned here. They talk about how they feel 
Neil, they talk about uh, how they how felt. They, feel, yeah. they talk about hmm? they talk about how they felt. So they've, they've actually really connected with they've their connected bodies. actually with themselves. Yeah. And that's but I have to tell you again, this is not a, a yoga retreat. It's not a mindfulness retreat. This is a this is a hard, fast business training center for sustainability. You know, we get CEOs, senior people, we get uh, women empowerment programs, quite diverse actually. But they all, when it comes down to it, are human beings who need that connection with nature. You yeah. know, and they, I told you the walls are made of earth, the ceilings, we've got earth above us, we're almost like in a burrow here. Mm. The acoustics are amazing and the bands who come and play here love it. Um, so that's what's coming out of this, this visitor's book. And uh, so I was kind of feeling, this is kind of, how can we not be green? But all these people are saying they feel so good. So it got me to thinking, are green buildings healthy buildings? Mm. How do we know? Because usually green buildings are measured by energy consumption, water consumption, waste, and all those things that are important. But I felt something was being missed. So the studies so far have all shown that when you can see out of windows, as I, I'm looking now, uh, when you even have pictures of trees on the wall, health improves in all ways from in, uh, increased immunity, uh, reduced blood pressure, re reduction in anxiety, up to 71% reduction in symptoms of depression. Mm. There's lots and lots of studies on that, and particularly in the healthcare sector, where in intensive care, just having plants around, being able to see out of windows, patients recover 20% more quickly. All those studies are there, but I wanted to understand it from a little bit more from the feelings and perception perspective. Mm. So in uh, uh, two years ago, 2019, just right before the whole COVID pandemic uh, hit us all, yeah. um, we uh, did a study with some colleagues who also built a similar building to this, also with uh, handmade adobe bricks like this in India. We had a hundred of our, our people, when we could still have people coming here in large numbers, hundred people here uh, filling questionnaires after their stay about their whole experience. And the same happened in Sharanam in, in India, in uh, the, the uh, Tamil Nadu region, which was, do you remember the massive tsunami in the yes. Spanish? Yeah. 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 That whole area was completely devastated and Sharanam was built to help regenerate that area. So we thought, let's have a look. Let's see what's going on here. And what we found, and we had 100, 100 respondents of both places, one in India, one here in Crete. What we found is the major issue was that people felt safe. They felt an increased feeling of security. They felt like they were at home and all most suggested reduced levels of anxiety and stress. Yeah, amazing. Uh, really amazing. Yeah. And this study will be published on the 26th of uh, July, a bit, a bit delayed because of the COVID, but it's going to be published in the Springer Nature uh, publication. It is amazing because none of this really shows up on the green ratings system. Yeah. Because it's, it's our perception. Yeah. So it's beyond, our perception. beyond sustainability, which is interesting because when I first looked at the topic and we, we started talking about it, I was thinking that biophilic design is probably, you know, maybe adding some plants or natural furnishings, but clearly we're talking about a lot more than that. Yeah, a lot more. I mean, that, that's part of it for sure. I mean, mm. even, you know, even when I sort of look at the kind of comments that people are, are referring to, where, it, you know, from this, this visitor's book and from the study, you know, they're talking about this is the antithesis of stressful living. It's better than a weekend at Health Farm. Enjoying the sounds of nature whilst working was amazing beyond words. Um, open sky and nature, soothing feel, presence of beautiful trees. It's an experience itself to be here. And the ones I really love are that um, I felt at Isa, I felt like I was at home every minute. And Isa is a second home I didn't know I had. I will always have the Isa feeling with me. These are very special responses because this means they must really feel safe here. So the, we have plants all around us. We, we are surrounded by, of course, the natural creeks of wilderness and we have plants inside all the time. And we do that very purposefully, but I do it very naturally. It's, it's what I like, you know, don't you? I want to create a workspace that I want, I want to enjoy and feel health, healthy and frankly now. So that obviously is noticed by the people who come here and it's quite a, subliminal thing very often it's not always mm. a conscious um uh, feeling the people are writing these these comments afterwards they wouldn't have come here knowing they're going to feel that way 
mm. at all, at all. So the plants is definitely part of it. Um, and in fact, even NASA has, did you know this? NASA has a super list of plants that they want, they, they did put up on in the International Space, Space Station for yeah. filtering the air. Wow. So on, on yeah. those lists, the spider plants, gerbera daisies, um, the mother's tongue um, snake plant, there's about 10. You, anyone can Google that. Is that, the one, is that the one I have over here? Let me put my glasses on. To, <laughs> yes, that's that exactly one of those. Brilliant. That's one of those. And, and yeah. bamboo is also very good. Yeah. Um, and oh, have you got a peace lily behind you? Yes, we have. Yeah, on the other well, side. Well, that's on, that's one of the top seven. Fantastic. Top seven. So, so it's not just plant. Um, the plants purify our air, and apparently, an average size home, just with fifteen spider plants, who hasn't got a spider plant? Um, a, a, fifteen spider plants will purify the air in an average size home. Wow. So yeah, it's right. visually connecting with nature. It's mm. physically helping us with our health. And other studies, again, the more kind of more uh, dry, let's say, academic studies, show that with purified, well-ventilated air, people's cognitive behavior doubles pretty much. Yeah. People yeah. have 46 minutes more sleep a night. Cool. These are the these are yeah. really very clearly connected now with having a few plants in your home. So don't underestimate the power of good pot plant. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, that's actually really fascinating. I mean, we we've just um, done some uh, some changes with within our home and garden recently, and um, as explained to somebody else I interviewed recently that you know as you walk into a room, what I wanted to see immediately it was outside that room. I wanted to see some some plants and colour. And, and also where I'm sitting now, looking straight out at the window, I also, there's a, there's a viewpoint. And, and obviously, you know, when you're thinking, you turn away from your computer, you look in another direction. Mm -hmm. And connecting with nature, I always find really helps. So um, that's one of the reasons why we did that. But I love what you're saying here about um, the plants in the home uh, and giving more oxygen, helping sleep, which obviously is going to be so much um, an extra 45 minutes of sleep for, oh. for a lot of people, especially you who's struggling. Um, so we will add some more plants into our home. Obviously, we've made a good start, but clearly yeah, there's more we can do. So. so that's fantastic. What, what I'm really curious about as well, because I know a lot of people, it's great. I live in the countryside. Um, it, it's Obviously, we, I'm blessed with, with that. A lot of people do live in cities and towns. They live in flats. Um, so is this something that people can incorporate? We mentioned plants, but are there are other things people can incorporate into their homes that um, they can benefit from. Yeah, well, this actually starts to get into the Shinrin Yoko side of, um, uh, of theory, if you like, and practice, and bringing the forest into the home. So that's what so I that mean. Shin, shin. So Shinrin Yoko means forest bathing, in fact. Forest bathing. As right. I said, it's connected with nature, out, usually outside the building, going into the forest. Yeah. But it's not just the visual aspect, it is the smells, the sensing, the complete connection. That's a whole nother topic for another day perhaps yeah. um but um but actually uh part of the shinrin yoko healing process is bringing that forest experience into yeah. the home so there's, there's a there's the visual connection with nature and that is a proven uh piece of, of uh, study to show just looking at nature makes us feel better that's 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 uncontested now then also bringing the smells so um this place i have lavender everywhere i'm lucky I, it grows Grows like a weed here in Crete, obviously. A lavender and rosemary, the two things yeah. I have everywhere, because they're lovely to see, but they also the whole place smells Smell lovely. Nice. Lavender, yeah. and it smells of earth, of course, because the place yeah. is made of earth. Um, so that's my my thing, lavender. But even back when I'm back in the UK, in my house in the UK, I have lavender actually everywhere. I've just grown up with that, I think, Neil. It makes me feel very much at home, lavender, anywhere yeah. in the world. But there's things like cedar wood is very, very healthy mm. and very enriching and relaxing. Um, so you can get seed cedar wood shavings. You can make your own diffusers with essential oils. Spruce and pine, pine trees are the top in healing in terms of fragrance. And also in terms of using the, the, um, the oils on any burns or cuts and things like that. That is, it, spruce and pine are the best pretty much. Yeah as all round winners. So you can bring all those smells into your home too. You can have flower boxes, of course, outside. But actually, before all that, if you're talking about flats uh, and, uh, and perhaps being not living on, on ground floors, the first thing is get outside of the flat. Yeah. Leave it. 
get outside. The best thing you can do is get outside often and do do your Shinrin Yoko outside in the real, real mm. natural world, because that will nourish and embolden you when you come back into living inside. Yeah. It's, it's, and get off but, the Facebook, get off the telephones, get yeah. off these, you know, stop looking at blue lights all the time, which is terribly bad for our health, for example. Yeah. Get all those gadgets out of the bedroom and stick in a couple of spider plants. It's amazing actually just being outside. I was out last weekend and just sat out there for, for must be sort of an hour and a half or so and came back indoors. And actually it was almost like my aura had been cleansed while I was sitting outside. So I really get what you're, you're, uh, you're saying. Well, it's not almost like you have been cleansed. You've been physically cleansed. Yeah. You literally have been physically cleansed, you know. And uh, my car broke down last week, which is a bit of a bit of a pain, but there we go. And it needed maintenance. It needed to go a bit of a clean yeah. up and a clean. It needed a new battery, actually. Um, and now it's fantastic. We all we all need new batteries. So yeah. the way to recharge our batteries is um, through nature. I mean, it, it literally does recharge us. The energies are real. They're not any kind of conceptual yeah. thing. They are, they're real they're, they're real and studied. And have, and this is the point to going back to my own studies here. I knew that people were feeling well when they came here or better because they, one, they told me so, they wrote it and they came back Neil, for more. Mm -hmm. They regularly come back for more. Um, and that wasn't, that wasn't documented anywhere in the green building. Yeah. Uh, criteria because it's perception. Well, if you know anything about placebo, the perception of a placebo pill making someone's backache go away means their backache it has gone away. away. Yeah. It's gone away. Yeah. You yeah. can't argue with that. It's gone away. Yeah. Even if people don't understand how placebo works. So if you believe and you feel that being in nature makes you well and recharges your battery, it does it. It actually does do it. Yeah. Fantastic. Sharon, really interesting talking to you. What, what um, I would love to do, I, I ask everybody that I interview to leave us with a challenge, something that we could do immediately, um, build into our lives. So what would be a first step that someone could take having heard what you're talking about today? Yeah, you see, the first step is to notice. The first step isn't actually putting the plants in. That actually comes a bit later on. Mostly people go through their lives not noticing how they're feeling. Uh, health and mental. If you go back to the, the World Health Organization's kind of uh, description, we're, we're kind of more in tuned into, oh, it's not hurting me. I'm not diseased, therefore I'm okay, mm. which is far from far from okay indeed. Yeah. That is barely surviving. It's definitely not thriving. So the really first thing is noticing your own complete state of well-being. Because I, I think that's what happens here, Neil. They come here to Crete, to this amazing building on the top of a mountain. It is very, very special. And they notice things about themselves mm. they really haven't had time to, or yeah. even the inclination to notice when they've been back in there every day. Very, very busy world. Mm. Uh, and I think that is the first thing to do before anything else. Because I think, I think jumping to a quick solution, whether it's a plant or an aroma, or even going for a walk, yeah. is missing out that first really important step. Yeah. Maybe it's through mindfulness coaching or through a, a, a trusted community like your own, for example. Mm. And when people come here, very often they come as strangers, but they definitely leave as friends. Yeah. Um, because then they, they people help one another to see see elements of the self they've not noticed. And I think it starts with that, I have to say. Yeah, brilliant. Sharon, do appreciate your time. We'll have you back to talk about Shin Shinrin Yoko. Um, Shinrin Yoko, yes. Yeah, we'll have you back. We'll talk about that um, in a bit more detail another yeah. time, but really do appreciate your time today. Each week, I ask the experts that I interview to leave us with a little challenge. It's just a first step. It's something that we can try. If we enjoy it, obviously we can keep doing it. If we don't like it, we can just throw it out and keep looking for what does work for us. I'll be taking this week's challenge. You can see my findings from this challenge in our challenge roundup video, which is a monthly summary covering all of the challenges our experts have shared. To get that video and all of our latest health and wellness uploads, including interviews and reviews, subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified whenever we post. And if this channel can help your friends and family, please share it with them too. If you want to get proactive with your health, Total Wellness Club are developing health quests over at questly.life. Join while we're developing the site and get access to health quests that immediately personalize your health. You'll get to identify which of 10 critical health categories need your attention. You'll be able to track your progress 
and you'll be able to help us develop the platform too. I'll put a link in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.